College Park, Maryland, in a sellout crowd getting ready to watch the Maryland Terrapins against the Tar Heels of North Carolina. There is Mr. Intensity, Garrett Williams. <laughs> he's now coached in the Big East, the Big Ten, and the ACC. If if you like pressure, he's he's had it his entire career. You know, I talked to him earlier today, Mike, and he was ready to go at about 11.30 this morning, <laughs> this late start, something that he um, didn't like to deal with too much today. Dean Smith, one of the great coaching legends in the history of college basketball, now in his 29th season at North Carolina. He is, before he's done, he will hold virtually every record there is to hold in college basketball. Let's get to starting lineups from public address announcer Nick Cavalakidis. From the University of Maryland and Cold Fieldhouse, here are your starting lineups. For the North Carolina Tar Heels, from Stanton, Virginia, a 6'6 senior forward, number 22, Kevin Madden. From Utah, Alabama, 6'9 junior forward, number 32, Phil Pete Chilka. From Hacienda Heights, California, 6'11 senior center, number 42, Scott Williams. From Binghamton, New York, 6'1", junior guard, number 21, King Rice. From Nassau, the Bahamas, 6'7", junior guard, number 44, Rick Fox. In his 29th year at Carolina, head coach Dean Smith. The Maryland Terrapins. From Roxbury, Massachusetts, 6'4", sophomore guard, number 14, Jesse Martin. From Greenbelt, Maryland, 6'10", sophomore forward, number 32, Gerard Mustaf. From Sussex, Virginia, 6'9", senior center, number 25, Tony Messenberg. one junior guard, number 11, Tion McCoy. And from Temple Hills, Maryland, 6'8", sophomore guard, number 42, Walt Williams. And here at Maryland. Maryland, head coach, Gary Williams. Maryland at 9-4, and 1-1 one and one in the ACC. North Carolina 10-5. This is their first Atlantic Coast Conference game. We'll be back in a moment. It's uncanny how this car turns one person after another into a real driving enthusiast. But that's the magic of Grand Am. Grand Am excitement in your choice of coupe or sedan. Check it out. And now with $1,000 cash back, there's no reason to wait. At the Hair Club for Men, we don't believe that hair makes the man. The potential is already there. We just help you find out who you really are. And this is the important free booklet that can get you started. It tells you about every hair replacement method available and Hair Club's unique strand-by-strand strand method. And just look at the kind of results you can get. Even if you have severe thinning, we can help you get your hair back gradually so the change isn't drastic. And just know, these are all active Hair Club members Men who have experienced an amazing transformation in their lives, a change that has allowed them to lead a normal, active lifestyle with a full, natural-looking head of hair. No wind is too strong, no water too rough. The Hair Club's strand-by-strand strand system looks totally natural under almost any conditions. So call our toll-free number now, and I'll send you our new booklet that hopefully will lead to an exciting change in your life. And remember, I'm not only the Hair Club president, but I'm also a client. North Carolina at 10 and 5 coming in has dominated this series and has won its last nine ACC opening games. Maryland, on the other hand, has lost nine straight to North Carolina. They haven't beaten them here since 1983, but the Terps this year, 5 and 1 at home this season in Clark. There's nothing like playing at home, especially with a sellout crowd. That's a nice good home cooking. Massenburg, the jump center against Tilcut. North Carolina controls, and now Tion McCoy. Comes up with the ball and gives it off to Walt Williams, the 6'8 point guard for Maryland. Massenburg 
He can be a key tonight. A very emotional player inside. This is King Rice running the North Carolina offense. Fox tried to dump it to Chilcutt. Actually turned into a shot. Madly with a follow. Won't go. McCoy can't save it. It's out to Maryland. Both of these teams will mix, mix it up defensively as we take a look at Dean Smith. Maryland that time started in the man-to-man. -man. Carolina also started in man-to-man. It's an interesting guard matchup. Fox and Williams. Williams kind of a point forward. Jesse Martin is 6'4", 210 pounds, prefers to play inside and is more effective inside. And Williams, conversely, at 6'8", a little bit more comfortable playing outside. That one was off of Jesse Martin, the sophomore out of Roxborough, Massachusetts. North Carolina ball, and this is King Rice again. And King Rice bounces it off his foot. Coming into this game, he had done so much better this year than he has in the past of not turning the ball over. Well, when you're going to quarterback your ball club, coaches like to look at that assist to turnover ratio, and he's got a pretty good one. That one's just an unforced error. Williams, nice move to get by, and Chilcutt intercepts the pass intended for Mustaf underneath, and it's off a Maryland player to North Carolina. So a rather ragged start to first 53 seconds. Both teams a little jittery here this North Carolina's first conference game. Maryland anxious to end that nine-game losing skid to the Tar Heels. Tion McCoy is on right. This is Chilcutt. Dumps it low to Fox. Double clutch. Banked at home. Williams was all over him, and somehow Rick Fox found the net. Answered prayer that time. 2-0 Carolina. Martin kicks it out to Tion McCoy. Three-point shot is short. Fox, nice pass. A Rice ahead to Fox, kicked out of bounds. It'll be out to Merrill. So a little sloppy. Rice got the good pass out, but Fox couldn't control. That time, Maryland didn't have good defensive floor balance after the McCoy three-point attempt. Walt Williams hustling back for us to turn over. McCoy took all of last year off, and here's the traveling violation call on McCoy as King Rice was giving him pressure. Third turnover against Maryland. Carolina's already committed two. We've only played a minute 36. We've had five turnovers. Both teams very anxious. Madden. Maryland going man-to-man. -man. This is Chilcutt, double team, knocked away, stole. Pushed up ahead to Jesse Martin. No whistle, fans wanted a foul as King Rice got back on defense. Fox for three. In and out. Here comes McCoy the other way. Four on two. Tied at two. Boy, at this rate, this game will end at 10-10, but everyone will have to go to the hospital for oxygen. <laughs> They're playing at a rapid-fire pace, and right now probably playing on a lot of emotion. That emotional edge will settle off and come off, and the players will settle into their normal groove. Usually takes a couple of minutes in a real big game for the players to settle into their normal routine. Carolina always an outstanding passing team. Rice with a set shot for three. Loose ball, here comes Merrill. King Rice has never been a great threat as a shooter. He is much better now than he used to be. Only 40% on the season. Massenburg, double pump. Maryland has the lead. Fox. Williams with a loose ball. Boy, it is ragged early. I think Carolina would prefer to play at a slower pace. Their players really looking to try to get shots too early. Two passes, move the defense a little bit. They used to have a rule with Carolina. You had to pass it five times before anybody could shoot. Fox, who has a great pump fake, almost traveled but got away with it. Williams with a follow, spins out on it. Here comes Williams from Merrill. Nice pass foul as Tion McCoy goes for the hook. Boy, this is run and gun basketball. It's up and down. That's the way Gary likes his teams to play. Gary Williams wants a fast-paced game. He wants to dictate tempo. And so far here in the early going, Maryland having it their way as far as tempo is concerned. Foul was on Rick Fox. Of course, that's the way Williams grew up, played here at Maryland under that tempo. McCoy at the free throw line. Took a year off last year to devote himself to academics and has been admitted to the Maryland Business School because of it and has come back to play as a junior. 
nice to see in these days of uh, people getting raked over the coals for what they do academically. McCoy makes them both, and it's 6-2 Maryland after Carolina had taken the 2-0 lead. Williams, short on the jumper. Martin got a hand on it, but kicked out to Rice. Fox for three. He's a dangerous outside shooter, hitting 50% from long range this year. Got to get a hand in his face. Maryland that time in the full court pressure, and when they do that, they really have to react quickly to get back to the defensive ball. Martin, turnaround jumper is short. Fox with a good rebound. And this is a good rebounding Carolina team, probably their strength. Lynch is checked into the ball game, has it underneath. Had it blocked, got it back. Had it blocked again. Massenburg has stuffed it twice. And a foul as the ball goes to the floor. Mustaf will pick up the personal. Both of these teams have active inside players. Here's George Lynch being denied by Massenburg, not once, but twice. And then Mustaf picking up the foul on the reach in. Maryland, it seems, has always had a shot blocker in the middle. Always. Williams will come out for a rest. Fox will come out for a rest. We'll check the North Carolina lineup for you right now. Hubert Davis and George Lynch are in off the bench. North Carolina has had five offensive rebounds so far in this game, but they're down 6-5. Heck, Lynch got three of them in one possession. Yeah, that's right. McCoy picked up by Rice. Nice feed in the middle of Martin. Turnaround jumper, Jesse Martin. Bad pass, Rice saves it, but Williams knocked it out of bounds. Great anticipation on the part of Williams. We've got a timeout, 15-41 to go and a half. Maryland over North Carolina by three. Take home Clint Eastwood and Bernadette Peters, a wild pair on a fast ride. Didn't anyone ever tell you you shouldn't mess with a man's vehicles? Not alone. Pink Cadillac, coming January 31st on video cassette. I'm Bob Jenkins. Join me each week for Speed Week for all the latest news and results from the world of motorsports. Speed Week, the motorsports coverage you deserve each week here on ESPN. ESPN gives you a spectacular courtside view of NCAA basketball. Slam jammed with color and excitement. Check out the sparkling sights and sounds of electrifying shootouts all season long. Big play. Get a T.O. baby. Four to alley -oop. It's awesome. What a job at the leg. Right through conference championships, the NIT and the NCAA tournament, the color and excitement of college basketball is live on ESPN. Maryland by three with 15.41 to go. Let's go back in the action a little bit, Clark. Here's a nice cut by Jesse Martin. Walt Williams at 6'8 has an advantage in that he can see over most guards. He was the guy who made the entry pass into the post. And Jesse Martin, the guy we see here, was the beneficiary. Martin only averaging 9.6 points a game. He's a high school center. Under Bob Wade, he played in the backcourt. Gary Williams has moved him back up front, and he likes it. Excellent adjustment to his personnel by Gary Williams to place Martin inside where he feels a little more comfortable. Kirk Terrapin's now in a 1-2-2 zone. Hubert Davis working outside with Madden. Whistle away from the ball. And a foul will be called away from the ball on George Lynch. His first and team second. Lynch, I think, called for having his arms out away from his body too far, making contact with one of the Terrapins along the baseline. Fifth time North Carolina has turned it over in the first 440. Williams now being guarded by Davis and drives on him. What a move by Williams! Walt Williams, a very versatile player. He's a stat sheet stuffer, the kind of guy that fills up the stat sheet, does a lot of things, passes, handles, scores, and rebounds. Well, that was a great move. There's a beautiful pass by Madden. Chilcott missed it, but tipped in by George Lynch. 
Lynch averaging a rebound every three minutes of play, which is an excellent per minute to rebound ratio. Martin forced that one and he's blocked. Call it on Madden, his first, team's third against North Carolina. Maryland has committed only one as a team here in the first half. Non-shooting foul, ball inbound. Martin kicks it back to Williams. McCoy. Back to Williams. Slash down the lane, and it's 12-7, Maryland. Davis was open. He can shoot the long jumper. Rice alley up to Madden. Oh. Beautiful pass behind the zone. Excellent execution. Madden showing you tremendous rise off the floor. That's a great pass by King Rice. One of the toughest passes to make in basketball, that alley oop pass. They tried the trap, and McCoy is wide open. Missed the five foot jump shot. Here comes Rice. McCoy trying to cut him off. Madden, bad pass. I mean, right at Gerard Mustaf. Back the other way, Massenberg, he's fouled. How about the handle between the circles by Walt Williams? Here it is, right here, the wraparound dribble to elude the defender in the vision. Oh, it doesn't get any better than that in execution. Massenberg unable to finish, but he was fouled by Kevin Madden. Walt is 6 8 2 3 As Madden goes to the bench with his second personal, uh, Williams, if you can be 6 8 and play point guard like that, I mean, there's only a couple of guys in the history of this game have done that. That's exactly right. Versatility is such a premium. If you get to be 6 8, 6 9, and you need to be able to do it all handle the ball, rebound. And Williams showing you here in the early going that his versatility, a valued asset for this club. Wouldn't you have loved to have been a point guard? I tried to shake and bake every now and then. I'd get out there and handle it and finish, but my, my territory was in the paint. Yeah. Massenburg gets them both, 14-9. Maryland very impressive early. Jeff Denny, number three, is into the game. They beat the press ahead to Fox. Davis. Carolina really unable to get Scott Williams involved. The Turk doing a nice job of sagging inside. Williams finally gets the ball. Massenburg muscled and Broadnax came from behind, knocked it out of his hand. Broadnax, the junior out of Forestville, Maryland. He's a walk-on that Gary Williams really likes, and he's seeing his first action. Terrapin's being very aggressive. Low post move here, a little rhythm bounce, and then the quick hands there by Broadnax. Denny to Fox. Loves that double pump, and he's fouled. You think as many times as he had fakes, no one would ever buy it again. Well, he's such, an out, he's such a good outside shooter, Mike, that he uses his perimeter shooting ability to set you up. You've got to respect him anytime he gives you the motion that he's going to shoot because he's such a good perimeter shooter. Cedric Lewis, number 43, is into the ball game. Excellent defensive player. Likes to play center. Williams really working hard trying to get loose inside. really bothers this team, doesn't it? Aggressive, quick pressure, much what we're seeing from Maryland. It's something the Tar Heels have had problems with, as you said, Mark. Jesse Martin back into the ball game for Gary Williams. Williams pulls up for the three. He is hot tonight. Outside, inside, and dishing it off. They stay in the business. He's just a player. Don't try to pigeonhole him into one position. He's a player. Maryland with a quick hands knocks another one out of bounds. And there's Gary Williams in his famous position at Crouch along the sideline. 17-9 Maryland. Denny left open, didn't want the shot, then Williams comes out of it. Davis to Williams, got away from Lewis, but it's blocked by Massenburg, and they'll call the goaltending. I don't know about that one. Very, very close. Gary Williams says it's going up. Davis inside to Williams. There's the shot. Ooh, oh, that oh. probably could have gone uncalled. 
Nice play by Massengill. 17-11. Broadneck. Good bounce pass inside, but then it gets away in a foul. Looks like Fox will be called for reaching in. Number two on Rick Fox. Quick correction before the therapist fans get on me. It's Massenburg, not <laughs> Massengill. <laughs> Henrik Rodel comes in for the first time out of West Germany. He played one year in the state of North Carolina, was the uh, high school player of the year because of that. Maryland can't handle it off the North Carolina player and back out to the Terps with 12.15 to go. So many more foreign players now playing in uh, American college basketball. Rodel had played for several of the West German national teams over there. The game is an international game, a worldwide game now. Williams, who's been sensational, dumps it off to Massenburg, got away with a body. Lewis with a follow. Maryland is sky high. Williams, triple team, knocked away by Broadnax. Now get him for a reach in. Two on Vince Broadnax. Terrapins are so active. Scott Williams is going to have to be careful putting the ball on the floor when he's able to catch it in the low post. The sellout crowd comes to its feet. 11.53 to go first half. Maryland by eight. Which publication tells you about hundreds of great jobs open across the country right now? High-paying professional managerial and technical jobs. The National Business Employment Weekly. Which publication helps you land one of those jobs with articles on how to sharpen your resume, how to shine in interviews, how to market yourself? The National Business Employment Weekly. Which publication helps you do better after you land a great job? Get along with your boss, get a raise, get promoted. The National Business Employment Weekly, published by the Wall Street Journal. It's all you need besides your own ability to land and do well in the kind of job you've been looking for in a part of the country you'll enjoy at a salary you can be proud of it's all you need. Get the National Business Employment Weekly at your newsstand or order by credit card and get eight issues by first class mail for $35. Call 800-372-3000. 800-372-3000. The National Business Employment Weekly. Don't make a career move without it. Weight Watchers magazine explains how you can prepare delicious low-calorie meals. You'll find articles on improving your appearance with easy, sensible exercises, fashion tips, beauty secrets, developed just for you, and much, much more. Call 800-544-1000 for 12 issues of Weight Watchers magazine. Only $14. That's 40% off the cover price. You'll also get free our expanded dining out calorie guide that includes fast foods. Call 800-544-1000 now. Dribble penetration often leads to something good. Here, Tian McCoy. Excellent penetration and pass. Gerard Mustaf has been relatively quiet, but that time got a nice basket. Sellout crowd, 14,500. Made uh, larger, in fact, because the students are not back at College Park. They don't come back uh, for a couple of weeks yet. So they have sold 14,500 seats for this one. It's the biggest crowd as far as ticket sales that they've had in about four years. Full court pressure by North Carolina. A tough assignment for them with their lack of quick. Excellent point, Mike. They're great on technique trying to trap, but uh, there's no substitute for speed, though. No. Massenburg. Nice rebound, Musta. 30-21, that matches Maryland's biggest lead. Scott Williams talking to the official, wanted to push. The guys in the stripe are letting them go at it pretty good in the paint. I love it. Can't have those ticky-tacky fouls fall in the paint. You gotta be a man to play in there. Just like you at Ohio State again, huh? Oh, I love it. Fox looks inside. Lynch. Walk. I'll tell you what, I like this young fella, George Lynch. Good-looking athlete, nice touch. 11th turnover for North Carolina. And a lot of those turnovers, Mike, really have been, well, a few of them anyway have been unforced. Mm -hmm. Just bad decisions, mishandling the ball, fumbles. I'd say half of their turnovers have been those types. 
Dean Smith goes to his bench again. Matt Wenstrom, number 55, a seven-foot freshman, is in the middle of the North Carolina defense. Again, he goes to the bench. He comes up with a big guy. Lacking the guard. Musta forced that one up over Wenstrom, knocked out of bounds out to North Carolina. Maryland seems to have gotten out of its offensive rhythm the last three or four times down the court. They'd really like to run, Mike. They want to play the fast pace game, get out and run and get some open court basket opportunities. And so far, the last few possessions, they've had to settle with their half court game. Try to set up a screen underneath, loose ball. Fox came out with it. Davis from long range. Lynch knocks it away, tries to save it. Guns it into Massenburg, who says, thank you so much. Caught it in defense. Three-pointer by Williams. Holy cow. He's got 10. What a first half for Walt Williams. Whistle and a foul. The defense got a little tough by Williams that time. His first personal foul. He knows that he's got the smile going. Really has been the story offensively for Maryland. Two drives, two three-pointers, a couple of beautiful assists, a couple of good defensive plays. He's wrapped up his portion of the highlight film already. <laughs> As I said earlier, a stat sheet stuffer. He fills that thing up from column to column. Biggest lead of the night for Maryland at 12, 33-21. Madden on the cut inside, triple team, missed it. Whistle. And it looks like they've got Massenburg this time. Excellent patience shown by Kevin Madden that time in the paint. To be an effective low post player, you've got to be quick, but you don't need to be in a hurry. That time Madden able to show the ball, keep his balance, and go up strong and draw the foul. Last foul was on Jesse Martin and not Massenburg. This is Jeff Denny back in to give Rice a breather. 4-16 to go first half. It has been Maryland's quickness and aggressiveness that has given the Terps a 12-point lead. Madden's free throw is good. And throughout Dean Smith's coaching career, he has had good free throw shooting teams. Excellent field goal shooting team, yeah. too. His team's normally well over 50%. I guess you could safely say excellent everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. With their history and their uh, tremendous alumni list, placed a lot of players in the pros. Williams McCoy. With a strong, another offensive rebound, Mustaf with a foul, offensive foul, Mustaf. Cleared out some space that really wasn't there. Did a great job to get to the offensive glass. Two on Mustaf, we have a timeout with 3.59 to go in the half. Maryland by 11. One of the great advantages of working with Schwab is that you're dealing with professionals across the country in almost every major city. I prefer helping someone to selling someone. To me, that's the Schwab difference. The reason why I like working for Charles Schwab, it's an incredibly innovative company, and there are many things you can get involved in. It's not just stocks and bonds. Call today for free information about Schwab services, 800-873-8900. Introducing the revolutionary Roller Ruler. Roller Ruler, an amazing high-tech geometric tool that is five instruments in one. The Roller Ruler's patented rolling mechanism allows you to draw perfect vertical lines to any length. And the multi-hold measuring edge lets you draw straight parallel lines as close or as far apart as you want. For horizontal lines, simply roll the ruler one or two centimeters apart and draw your line. Now you have perfect graph paper. And look at this. The Roller Ruler is a compass. Now you can make perfect circles of any size. Use it as a T-square for drawing exact small dimensions. As a protractor, Roller Ruler can produce and measure any angle with amazing precision. The Roller Ruler replaces all old-fashioned instruments. You'll find new uses for the Roller Ruler every day. Roller Ruler is completely guaranteed, and here's how to order. Credit card orders call 1-800-554-9000 or send $995 for one, fifteen ninety five for two, plus $3 shipping to Roller Ruler, Box 60, Department E, Los Angeles, California, or call 1-800-554-9000.
it was four years ago when the University of Maryland gave North Carolina its first loss ever at the Dean Smith Center. Thanks to a brilliant night from Lenny Bias, 35 points for Maryland. And Lefty Grizzell's team took control in overtime and spoiled Dean Smith's unblemished record. Dean Smith uh, lost to Lefty Grizzell that night, a man uh, who he beat so many times, and Lefty really enjoyed that one. North Carolina down by 11. The Terps have done an excellent job on defense. They forced 11 turnovers, and North Carolina shooting only 38% on the night. Shooting percentage always a function of the shots you get. And because Maryland has been so aggressive defensively, shots have been tough for the star here. Backdoor pass to Davis, but he missed the shot. Good pressure underneath. Quickly down to Broadnax. This is Williams. Massenburg. Good drive off balance. Offensive foul. Massenburg. Maryland has picked up three offensive fouls in a hurry. Kind of a delayed break situation that time. Massenburg elected to penetrate. Went into an area where there was no space. And even though North Carolina continues to shoot the ball poorly, Clark, Maryland has not been able to run very much. They really haven't, and again, that's what they want to do. They want to play a fast-paced game. In their last six ball games, they're averaging 95 points a game. Chill cut at the line. 86% free throw shooter, but he missed the first half of the one and one Rod next quickly down court. What a jam by Williams. Holy cow, what a hat. <laughs> I did five and six shots. <laughs> How do you like that? Backdoor cut flexed it when he got through the hoop. He has been awesome. 35-22 Maryland. Williams almost lost control. Denny, good pass to Williams. Well, excellent look. You can't beat the low post any better than that. Nice sit down by Scott Williams in the post. Excellent pass from Denny. Scott Williams, who averages 14 and a half points a game, has four. Arneo's in the zone now. Matchup 2-3. The zone has helped him, hasn't it? I think it has. It's cut down on Maryland's penetration. Lewis got a good shot at it that time, but missed Massenburg. Offensive rebound. We'll have a jump ball situation. Possession arrow. We'll give it to North Carolina. And we've talked about the, the difference. Go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say, coming up at halftime, we have uh, the top 20 and other scores from around the country. An update on the NCAA convention, all the very important decisions that are being made there, and we'll be back to recap the first half of our game, which has been mostly Maryland over North Carolina. Been there showing. I was going to mention the fact that we've talked about the quickness differences. And Carolina able to go to the zone, and that's enabled them to keep Maryland from getting the dribble penetration that, that they've been able to get on occasion against the man-to-man. Cedric Lewis with a quick move, knocked that one out of bounds. Massenburg will get a breather, as will Broadneck. Mustaf is back in, and Martin is back in. Nineteen backcourt points. North Carolina has only seven. And that was early from Fox. Nice fake by Williams. He's blocked. He's fouled from behind. Blocked by Mustaf, fouled by Lewis. This is where Williams wants it. Again, the rhythm bounce. Good ball fakes here. Loses Lewis, and then Mustaf. Got a lot of basketball, and I guess they called the foul on Lewis. Well, they called it on Martin. <laughs> they found Martin in there. Yeah, somewhere. That's his third. Williams in and out on the free throw. He's had a tough year at the free throw line, 61.3%. Martin will come out, Broadnax back in for Maryland. Carolina's hit only three of six from the free throw line tonight. They get four out of seven, and it's 35-25 with under two minutes to go in the half. Pressure by Rice on Williams. Look at the quickness against a man so much smaller than he is. 
Very fluid. Broad next. Lewis wanted it low. Mustaf tried to get it to him and then threw it away. McCoy intercepts. Williams goes down. Foul. And they're pointing at Williams. Dean Smith didn't care for that call. Well, excellent hustle by Scott Williams, the big guy. 6'10", getting down on the floor after the loose ball. Massenberg is back in. Mustaf will have a chance to get a breather. 136 to go in the half. McCoy goes to the line. 70% free throw shooter. Maryland has hit all six of its tries. And McCoy is two for two. After a couple of minutes of opening jitters, Maryland has played very confidently. Playing with a lot of poise. And we look at Gary Williams forever in that crouch position. <laughs> McCoy makes them both. Mike Anderson, the senior, checks back in. Williams will come out. So Anderson will handle the point. Maryland up by 12 with a minute 36 to go. Here's the full court press. Press really hasn't been a factor. It's more been Maryland's aggressiveness and quickness in their half-court defense. Exactly. And I think that may have an effect on the Tar Heels free throw shoot. They've been, they've been working so hard to get shots. Williams off balance but got it home. Nice shot. Lewis couldn't time his lead to block seven points for Scott Williams. You know, good aggressive defense in your face, in your chest defense has a way of wearing you out, not only physically, but emotionally and psychologically as well. Anderson, tough pass. Knocked away, picked up by Chilcutt. Would have been a miracle if that one got through. Lynch. And we've got a foul on Lynch as he dove back inbounds to try to get the ball from Anderson. That's the second time that George Lynch has almost lost it out of bounds, tried to throw it at somebody, and it hasn't worked. Lynch is going to get that turnover, but that pass that he got from Denny, really not a good, I think he got the pass from King Rice, really not a good pass because George Lynch really didn't have anywhere to go once he caught the basketball. That was his third foul. That's uh, Henrik Rodel back in. Lynch will have to sit down with three. Only 39 seconds to go in the half. So often a turnover or a bad play by one player has been created by the player who's given him the ball in a bad position. Anderson rims out. First Maryland miss from the free throw line. Tar Heels would clearly like to go into the locker room with a single digit deficit. Down by 10 right now, 37-27. This is where you really need a good, quick ball handling point guard that can break down the defense and create a shot either for himself or a teammate. And Rice just barely got it back. And now Rodel is going to have to do the job, and he throws it away. Maryland with a chance. Short on the jumper, but they snuffed out North Carolina's last opportunity in a basket. And an impressive first half for the University of Maryland as they lead North Carolina 37-27 here at Cole Fieldhouse. Let's go back to our studios and John Saunders. Mike and Clark, the Terrapins have lost nine consecutive games to the Tar Heels. They haven't won at home against them since 1983, but you'd never know it tonight. North Carolina looking very cold, down by 10 at halftime. The NCAA convention wrapped up today in Dallas with Dick Schultz, the executive director, saying it was the most productive in recent memory. They had done more for the student athlete than he could ever remember. What they did today involved drug testing. They will now test all sports every year, all year long, random testing. They will start with steroids because they can't afford to do all sports right now. It would cost $1.6 million to do every sport and for all drugs. But they will start in college football testing for steroids starting next year. And so they did plenty at the NCAA convention this week. On to the number one team in college basketball, the Kansas Jayhawks, who survived the game against Nebraska earlier this week, came away with a victory. They got a breather going down to Miami, although they lost by one there last year. Joe Wiley gets the pass from Jake Morgan. Wiley with the jam 
Miami led by four early, but Kansas has his problems. Mark Randall with the alley-oop, but can't find the opening and doesn't put it down. Randall, though, redeems himself with a little jump hook. Jayhawks led 49-35 at halftime. Second half, Ricky Callaway with the steal and takes it in for showtime. Kansas rolls on to the victory, 100-73. Larry Brown looking on, the coach of the Kansas Jayhawks when they won the national championship a couple of years back, 173. Ricky Callaway with 16 points, seven Jayhawks in double figures. Elsewhere, number five, Missouri, also out of the Big Eight. Great year for the Big Eight thus far. 57-39, to they have the lead at halftime. Missouri's won 22 straight games at home. St. John's, ranked number 15 in the nation against Syracuse, and they had to go in and face an angry group of Orangemen coming off a loss to Villanova. The matchup, the Orange hen, Boo Harvey says it's the Redmond's night. Jim Beheim concerned because Boo not only was sporting the great do, but Boo Harvey was dishing off to Jason Williams as well. Syracuse without a true point guard, so Derek Coleman says, yeah, I'm 6'10", but I'll make like a point guard. Takes it end to end, coast to coast, and then jams it at the other end. Syracuse up by one at halftime, and Derek with a little smile. Second half, more reason to smile. In the paint, he throws it up. Derek Coleman with the green ear to ear again. The Orange love the transition game. Coleman ahead to Stephen Thompson all alone. You know it's showtime. 81 to 72. Syracuse wins this game, coming back from that loss to Villanova. Derek Coleman matches his career high with 24 points, also had 17 rebounds in the game. Syracuse shot 67% in the second half. Remember, they shot around 30% against Villanova. Elsewhere, number 12, Arkansas and the Razorbacks, a winner in easy fashion over Baylor, 99-84 to is that final. Boston U facing the number 17 team in the nation, and the Wolfpack win it 95-70. to Rodney Monroe with 29 points, Brian Howard had 20. Stay with us. We'll have more scores and highlights as we continue at halftime. It's Big East ACC night. we the ACC right now. You'd never do this to your car, but we do it to all kinds of new cars just to see how they stand up. And you'd never test 26 different CD players, but we did to determine which rated best. And you'd never shampoo only half your head, but we shampooed 1,800 half heads to find out which brand of shampoo worked best. Who are we? We're Consumer Reports Magazine, and more than 4 million subscribers rely on us every month. Now, as an introductory offer, we'd like to send you a free trial issue. When you shop these days, you need more than money. You need unbiased information, and that's what you get in Consumer Reports. Unbiased because Consumer Reports does not accept outside advertising. It's subscriber-supported with a 53-year record of service, bringing you test results and expert guidance to help you shop smarter. We name names. We tell you straight out how various products perform, whether they're economical, easy to use, safe to use, whether they're likely to last. When you receive your free trial issue, read it cover to cover. Then you decide. You can accept a full year subscription. 11 additional issues of Consumer Reports, including our auto issue and buying guide issue, for only $20. A savings of 59%. Or simply write cancel on your invoice, return it, and owe nothing. The trial issue is still yours to keep free. So call now. No obligation. But if you do subscribe, we'll send you these two big buyer's guides, free with payment. The 1990 Buying Guide issue, 400 pages of product reports and comparative ratings, plus the New Medicine Show, valuable facts about cold remedies, antacids, and other over-the-counter drugs. Call for your free trial issue of Consumer Reports right now. Call toll-free now. Call now, toll-free, 1-800-247-7800. That's 1-800-247-7800. While some regard driving as a necessity, Volkswagen believes driving can be more exciting. Introducing Corrado. Head out on the highway. It's time to think about Volkswagen again. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, North Carolina versus Maryland, is brought to you by Federal Express, the best way to ship it over there. Half 
halftime at College Park in Maryland, leading North Carolina 37 to 27. The Tar Heels' first ACC game of the year. Maryland is one and one. Here are the leading scores for North Carolina. Williams with nine. He got most of them late in the half as they force fed him the ball inside. Rick Fox had most of his seven early. Madden with five. Lynch with four. Chill cut with only two. Maryland. Williams has been sensational from his point guard spot, both shooting from the outside and penetrating. He has 12. Tion McCoy, his backcourt mate, has nine. So the starting guards have 21 combined. Massenberg and Mustaf with six apiece. Martin and Lewis each had two. Walt Williams is five out of six from the field. 12 points, four rebounds, three assists, and only one turnover. Sensational first half. What do you think, Clark, that North Carolina can do to change the momentum here? Well, for one, they're going to have to shoot the ball a little better. Try to get it inside. And then they're going to have to contain Walt Williams. They go to the trap here. Massenburg from 16 feet. He's really improved the range on his shot. Basically known as an inside player, but in today's game, you need to be able to step out to the edge at 15 feet. 17 feet knocked down the open jump shot. Madden, who has not been much of a factor, there's the steal by Jesse Martin. Maryland's quick is doing the job against North Carolina. The 14th turnover for the Tar Heels. And again, Maryland's so active with their hands. Getting into passing lanes, deflecting balls in the paint area. Gary Williams coaching influence. He likes players to scrap and fight. Mustaf, Massenberg, offensive rebound. He missed. Chill cut comes out. Massenberg went to the offhand that time. Rice down the lane, dropped it off. Missed by Williams, rebounded by Massenberg. Both teams have missed early opportunities in the second half. McCoy, two-pointer. You know, without the responsibility of having to handle the basketball, Tion McCoy really has settled in nicely. Biggest lead of the game, Williams answers at the other end, and he's fouled. I don't really think that's what North Carolina is going to have to do, in addition to handling the ball a little better. They just can't afford to turn over. Here's Scott Williams showing you the ball, and he's got the nice, strong body able to finish inside, but I think that's one of the areas where they could really make Maryland work by throwing the ball inside. That put tremendous pressure on your defense. Foul was on Massenburg, his second. Williams can't finish the three-point play, and it's Maryland's ball. McCoy back to Walt Williams, the sophomore out of Temple Hills, Maryland. 6 8 2 3 To the baseline, off-balance runner won't go. Pushed up, forced it up, he's fouled. Tough break for Williams that time. He had good position. Looked like uh, Mustaf created the contact, but Williams will get the foul his second. Boy, and Dean Smith, Smith goes to five. This is like the old blue team. Five subs come in. Davis is on the court. Wenstrom. Well, a couple of Maryland players, Tion McCoy. Derek Cedric Lewis on the bench. Trying to get the crowd. Get him going. Rodel has come on. Jeff Denny. There's Dean Smith. Wholesale substitutions. Lynch is also in there. Maryland's quickness not only showing itself defensively, but also on the offensive glass. I think that might have been part of the reason for the substitution by Dean Smith. They're just getting beat to the basketball on their defensive ball. Maryland's hit 10 out of 11 free throws. comes Denny. It's 43-29. The lead is 14. Lynch he oh, is going boy. to be a great player. Oh, boy. I really like George Lynch. Tough shot. He had to make an adjustment as he went up for that one. Still able to knock it down. The Tar Heels go to what was their most effective defense in the first half, the 2-3 zone. Lynch had a rolling up for Virginia. Massenburg turnaround jumper. One goal. Lynch had it. Jesse Martin came from behind. Knocked it out of bounds. The concern when you go to the zone is individual blockout responsibility. Hubert Davis reach-in foul on Walt Williams. That'll be his second. 
Gary Williams comes up, just points to his forehead and says, thank you. Williams trying to make a spectacular play from behind and commits the foolish foul. Lynch gets the inbounds pass. 17 and a half minutes to go in the game. It's a 12-point Maryland lead. Rodel, offensive foul. A perimeter player at 6'7", 190, maybe not quite quick enough to play out there at this level. And that time tries to force penetration. And it's tough to make good penetration unless you move the defense with a couple of passes, swinging the ball from side to side. Martin looks inside to Massenburg, double team back to Tion McCoy. This is Williams. Mike Patrick and Clark Kellogg with you. Tion McCoy for three. What a follow! What a follow by Musta. <laughs> oh. Rodel almost lost it, then did, and he fouled. McCoy gets the reach in. Watch this follow. One of the major concerns when you play a zone is getting a body on offensive rebounders. Mustaf just walked around Davis, threw it down big time. Mustaf has gotten so much stronger. His bench press went from 180 to 300 pounds this year, so he's much more of a factor in serving. And Gary Williams really trying to encourage him to do more of his damage inside. He's an excellent outside shooter, but he also could be a real factor inside. Wenstrom, Denny, Hubert Davis. These five guys put in as a team by Dean Smith. Lynch. Shot clock is down to 18, and the crowd applauding Maryland's defense. Davis, tough drive, he's fouled. We'll see what happened there. Some good ball movement. Now you wear out the defensive pressure a little bit, and you create a scene for a good, solid, penetrating move. Number two on Tion McCoy, the second against Maryland here in the half. North Carolina has committed only two team fouls. North Carolina has always been such a patient ball club. Great coaching, great understanding of the game by the players. And I think Maryland got them out of what they would prefer to do in the first half. Yes. Because of their pressure and their quickness and their tenacity forced the Tar Heels to run a little faster than they're, they're accustomed to and subsequently led to turnovers and poor shooting. Davis can cut it back to 12. Missed it. Knocked around. Out of bounds to Maryland. The lead is 13 points. Clark, do you get the feeling that North Carolina, the way they have played, is very fortunate to be only 13 down and still in this game? Well, I tell you what, I was just thinking that same thought. This game clearly not over. Maryland has controlled it but they haven't really put a lot of space between themselves and the Tar Heels. A little spurt, and the Tar Heels are back in it. Boy, a lot of contact. Now bodies fly over the floor. We'll have a jump ball situation. Possession arrow goes to North Carolina. Fox just came out and paved Tion McCoy. Little cross body block. And yeah. I tell you what, seeing Fox in person for the first time as you look at Gary Williams, he wanted the offensive foul. Pleading his case, again, calmly. Now he goes bananas. Uh, he, he got lit up at the end there. <laughs> but Fox a much thicker player than I envisioned him being. King Rice with a wide pass. The 17th turnover against Carolina. We saw it Monday night as uh, Michigan was pounding on Indiana, did not put him away, and King Rice called for the blocking foul. And there's too much talent at this level to let somebody off the hook when you got it. 15.55 to go in the game. Maryland by 13. One of the great advantages of doing business with a firm like Schwab is that you're dealing with professionals across the whole country. They're creating financial advantages for the individual investor. Many companies reward their employees with stock options. That's why we offer an option financing service. It's flexible, convenient, and enables our customers to enjoy the full rewards they've earned. Our Schwab One account is a good example of how we give investors an edge. At other brokerage firms, it takes $20,000 to open an asset management account. 
At Schwab, it only takes 5000 And we give daily interest on investment funds, check writing privileges, and a lot more. To me, one Schwab difference is very clear. Most brokers are good talkers. Schwab brokers are good listeners. Call now for free information about Schwab's no-fee asset management account. 800-346-9400. That's 800-346-9400. Call Schwab now. For those considering a Toyota Camry, some revealing news. There's another five-passenger sedan with front-wheel drive, fuel-injected engine, roomier trunk, and it's $1,200 less than the Toyota Camry. In fact, this German-engineered 1990 Volkswagen Jetta GL, including its new features, costs less than last year. So stop tearing your hair out about new car prices. It's time to think about Volkswagen again. Crazy Calls, a tape of seven different songs and funny recordings for answering machines. Nobody's home. Nobody's home. Only fourteen ninety-five. Wait for the beat. You gotta leave your name. You gotta leave your number. To order, call one eight hundred five five four nine thousand. That's the story from Cole Fieldhouse in College Park, Maryland. 15.55 to go, 13-point lead. That's Boomer Esiason, the great quarterback of the Cincinnati Bengals, former Maryland football player, sitting at courtside here tonight, and the absolutely stunning Carl Lewis, one of the great track men of all time. And Tom McMillan, former Maryland star, former pro star, and now heavily into politics. Guy, you played against a few times. That's right. I bumped heads with Tom McMillan. Got to the hoop on him once or twice. You'd say Tom was a little more of a finesse player. It's been a struggle tonight for Carolina. It really has. They've hit in a lot of air pockets. Just haven't been able to sustain anything. Haven't really been able to take care of the basketball. And again, I think it goes back to the point we've made. And we don't want to sound like we're being redundant, but the quickness and the aggressiveness of Maryland has been the difference thus far. North Carolina trying to turn up its defense or not. Mustard, oh, what a block by Williams. Well, he made an excellent recovery because he had went for a steal out beyond the foul yeah. line. Here he comes back into your picture now, right at the middle of your screen. Excellent defensive play by Williams. Double team, Mustard steps through it, drops it off to Mansonburg. Nice awareness. 47-32, biggest lead of the game, and Carolina comes right back. Offensive foul, and Dean Smith, or excuse me, Dean Smith livid about it. I don't think an offensive foul was called no, by you're right. I thought that's what he was upset about. We need to do some interpreting here. Mike, to figure out what Dean is trying to communicate to the official. He was saying that uh, Maryland players are hitting the ball after the basket is made, trying to delay things. He gets a technical foul for his trouble, and Tion McCoy buries it. Well, All heck, technicals, two shots this year. Carolina able to get a basket after the make by Maryland, so yeah. even if Maryland was trying to delay things, it didn't work, and Dean picks up the key. Tion McCoy has hit six out of six from the line. And maybe more importantly, it's Maryland basketball. They're up by 15, matching their biggest lead. You don't see Dean get very many of them. Williams on the double team to Mustafa. He's fouled on the way up. The crowd comes to its feet. Yeah. Foul call was on Madden, his third. He stopped a consensus All-American a couple of years ago at the high school level. Had an outstanding freshman campaign. Ten points, five rebounds tonight for the sophomore from Greenbelt, Maryland, right down the road from the College Park campus. 50-34, Maryland extends its lead to 16, the biggest of the game. Massenburg gets a breather. 
Broadnax is on the court along with uh, Lewis, Cedric Lewis. Rice being pressured by McCoy, blows by him. Jill Cutt, who has not been a factor offensively, got his own rebound. And Tion McCoy will be called for the foul. That's three on Tion McCoy. Well, the way it looked at the end of that was like Master, that McCoy was the offended party, but he really backed into yeah, it. Yeah, he did. Little lower body root canal trying to keep Jill Cut out of there. That whistle for it. Oh, right there, 43. Whistle away from the ball. Lewis called for holding. Very good post defensive play. He likes to play with his back to the basket. Leads the club and block shots. Really does a nice job of working and keeping good offensive players from getting the position they want in the post. And that's the key to good post defense, denying the position. Fox, who hasn't been much of an offensive factor since very early in the game when he had seven points. Back to Williams. Rice had a three-pointer pass on. Tough bounce pass. Williams couldn't get it. Not a good decision by King Rice. Must have great catch. It's going Maryland's way tonight. It really is. All the loose balls are theirs. The good shot opportunities belong to them. Everything for Carolina is struggle. 52-34. Madden double pump. It's blocked for the foul on Mustaf. That's three on Mustaf. Madden just posted up here. He's got the strong body. Goes up and Mustaf over the top. Got him on the wrist. 14-20 to go in this ball game. Mustaf will come out. Massenburg comes back in. Gary Williams doesn't want him picking up a fourth quickly. You know, Carolina, because of their lack of quickness, not the type of team that can readily come from behind. Maryland will be able to exploit the lack of quickness of the Tar Heels if the Tar Heels decide to press an overplay, which is what they're going to have to do if it continues on this course. North Carolina has made only six of 12 free throws in this ball game. North Carolina will get the ball back, though, because Maryland, Massenburg stepped on the end line. 14,500 has just been announced as the official sellout here at College Park. It's been a while since Cole Fieldhouse jumped this way. I'll tell you what, I remember when Gary was hired at Ohio State, the same type of excitement and enthusiasm You're right. evident at, in St. John Arena when he got there. Massenburg knocked that one away, intended for Chilka. That kind of excitement has followed him everywhere he's gone, even an American university here in Washington, D.C. It was his first head coaching job in an impossible situation. He won in one pick. There's no question about his track record. He knows how to produce winning basketball teams. Fox trying to penetrate, gets it back to Rice. And the easy shot, and goes for the hard one, makes it, and he's fouled. First bucket of the night for King Rice. Well, you took the words right out of my mouth. He passes up an open shot opportunity. Yeah. And then looking for a degree of difficulty points, <laughs> leans into this one. Tion McCoy gets the foul. It's his fourth, and Gary Williams will have to set him down. So Maryland getting into some foul trouble. Mustaf with three. Rice hits the free throw. 52-38, North Carolina just hanging around in the neighborhood. They won't go away. And we've got a foul on Fox. Going after Broadnax. There's Gary Williams going to work on the Zebras. <laughs> Gary hasn't turned that lovely shade of crimson, though, yet tonight. Tough to get that upset when you're up by 14 against North Carolina. Exactly. Anderson in to run the club. He's in the backcourt with Williams. Anderson has not played organized basketball for five years. They look for him just to spell the backcourt starter. 
could not be a liability when he's on the floor. And he was that time, threw it away, but Maryland gets it back. Massenburg to Lewis, lost it on the way up. Well, he's the most embarrassed guy out there now. It's always a little embarrassing when you're able to get inside that close and not come up with the finished result. Just you guys with the big hands aren't supposed to do that. It's not supposed to happen, but it does on occasion. Rice quickly back down court. This is Fox. Lynch. I'll tell you what, player. This kid needs to be touching the basketball when he's out there. Brodnax just got away with it. Carolina scored six straight. Here's a reaching foul. And a little spurt by Carolina. And all of a sudden, Maryland maybe gets a little conservative, a little tentative, and Carolina maybe gets back into the game. You mentioned it a little while ago, Maryland in control, but not in total control. Bad pass by Anderson. Thought he had someone breaking for the hoop. He gunned it down the lane and nobody home. Maryland has now committed 11 turnovers. North Carolina 19. Rice got by Anderson, dumped it off to Chilk, got blocked by Lewis. Saved by Lynch. Blocked by Lewis again. Here comes Williams. Good decision. He'll wait for help. Massenburg with a run. Fox ahead to Rice. Fox for three. Big basket. He cuts the lead to nine points. Gary Williams has seen enough of that. He wants a timeout with 11.53 to go in the game. Carolina has scored nine in a row. For those considering a Toyota Camry, some revealing news. There's another five-passenger sedan with front-wheel drive, fuel-injected engine, roomier trunk, and it's $1,200 less than the Toyota Camry. In fact, this German-engineered 1990 Volkswagen Jetta GL, including its new features, costs less than last year. So stop tearing your hair out about new car prices. It's time to think about Volkswagen again. Fitness Quest presents Charlene Tilton. I work hard to stay fit, and I love it. So I'm glad I discovered this lean, mean sit-up machine, the Abdominizer. It lets you rock, rock, rock your way to a firmer stomach in just minutes a day. The patented Abdominizer creates an automatic pelvic tilt that targets stomach muscles while cushioning the tailbone and lower back. It's as close as science has come to the perfect sit-up for upper abdominals. Knees in like this works lower abdominals. And this built-in rocker mechanism even gets those hard-to-work lateral obliques. The abdominizer really works for me. And it can work for you, too. So if you're serious about your stomach, call toll-free now. To order your abdominizer, call 1-800-752-7900. Use your credit card to avoid COD charges or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $3 shipping and handling to abdominizer. Department 109, Canton, Ohio. That's 1-800-752-7900. North Carolina really scored during the early signing period. This is Brian Reese, the 6'7 forward out of, out of New York, a tremendous inside player. A lot of people would say just what North Carolina needs, another big man inside, but he can move. And here are the other top recruits for North Carolina's incoming class, Derek Phelps, who should be able to help him in the backcourt. Clifford Rozier at 6'9", Pat Sullivan at 6'7". And Dean Smith has always been able to come up with quality recruiting classes, especially when he's had gaps to fill. Well, that's how come they've had the tradition they've had. He's come up with players when he's needed to. And Brian Reese, the guy I saw in the King Cotton Classic, a very explosive offensive player. Of course, Scott Williams is one of the guys they will lose up front, the 6'11 senior, who is a staple of their inside game. Could you look at the freshman Lynch? who's on the court right now, and you know some of the other guys that will be coming in for North Carolina and some of the people that are maturing on the roster right now. It's a little tough for the rest of the ACC to feel sorry for Dean if he's going to struggle for one year. Williams for three! 
What an answer coming off the bench. North Carolina had cut the lead to nine. Williams puts it right back up to 12, and he has 15 points tonight. Lynch lost it out of bounds. Well, Walt Williams has been sensational. He really has been, and those are the type of baskets the big players make to deflate another team's morale and the run that they've had. timeout with 11.06 to go in the game. Maryland by 14 over North Carolina. Cadillac announces two ways to begin a prosperous new year. Number one, lease a Cadillac sedan DeVille for as little as $389 a month. Special smart lease terms are also available on other Cadillacs. Number two, your Cadillac dealer can pass along generous factory-to-dealer incentives when you purchase a new Cadillac by January 31st. But act promptly, because while the new year will last 12 months, these outstanding offers will not. Cadillac, Cadillac, Cadillac style. Want an adjustable bed, but don't think you can afford one? Then you haven't priced Craftmatic adjustable beds lately. Craftmatic Model 2 beds cost hundreds less than these quality flat beds. And this Craftmatic Model 3 is available at 50% of Craftmatic 2's low cost. 50%. Craftmatic Model 3 and 2 beds adjust to all these healthful positions and offer optional heat and massage, yet cost less than these quality flat beds. Get our free catalog by mail including information on Craftmatic 3s at savings of 50% of Craftmatic 2s low cost. Hello, I'd like to receive your free catalog and 50% information by mail. Certainly, sir. It's easy, so call for this free catalog right away. Call 1-800-642-2800, that's 1-800-642-2800, toll free. Call 1-800-642-2800. Do you know what open-end mutual funds are? The Wall Street Journal Guide to Understanding Money and Markets tells you in clear, simple English. Do you know how to spot trends in stocks? And what stock options are. And zero coupon bonds. And the difference between treasury bills and treasury notes. Everything you want to know about the sometimes baffling world of money and investing is in this remarkable 120-page book. And now it's yours free when you subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. Call now and you can have 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal and this valuable 120-page Guide to Understanding Money and Markets. That's 13 weeks of the journal for the news and ideas you need every business day. And this guide free, which tells you everything you want to know about money and markets. Markets. Now for only $34. Call toll free 800 642 7400. Today's Wall Street Journal. Faster, tougher, smarter. Call 800 642 7400 now. Gary Williams played point guard for the Maryland Terrapins in the mid 60s. Never much of a score, four and a half points a game for his career, but a tenacious defensive player and played with all his heart all the game, and it's the kind of thing that has carried over to his coaching career. He wants players that scrap just like that. But uh, Clark Kellogg, my broadcast partner tonight, has accused Gary of being a bricklayer from the free throw line. 60% for his career. Certainly he can't talk to any of his players about <laughs> shooting from the stripe, unless he doesn't show them those numbers. But if you don't hustle, that's the guy you gotta answer to. Maryland's done a good job from the free throw line tonight. Jesse Martin hits this one. The Terps have four players in double figures, now lead by 15 with 11.06 to go. Williams is the leading scorer with 15. And Maryland's at 14 out of 17 free throws. North Carolina needs a spurt. There's Fox for three. 
tipped up to the top of the basket, hit the support. Tipped by North Carolina, I believe, out to Maryland. Gary Williams working on a statistic that not many people can ever say they've had in their career. He would be 1-0 against Dean Smith. <laughs> Williams, bad pass, but he got it right back. To Muska. Muska dumps it off to Massenburg. That epitomizes the evening for the Terrapin. Loose ball, somehow they come up with it, somehow they score. Maryland has scored the last eight after North Carolina cut the lead to nine. Hubert Davis fouled on the way in. So the Terps had a big answer for North Carolina's challenge. Hubert Davis looking a little like his uncle Walter Davis there. Flashing into the lane, yeah. hanging a little bit, drawing the foul. Last foul was on the Broadnax, his third. Still 10-25 to go in this game. The lead has grown to 17. And remember, Maryland has not beaten North Carolina here since 1983. Davis hits the free throw. Well, Mustaf likes that little drop over your head pass. Yeah. He made a couple of nice ones to Massenburg. Davis hits them both. 60 to 45, Carolina trying to put on the pressure. Williams with that high dribble, almost lost it, now does. Scott Williams back to Davis. Davis, good outside shooter. Boy, Williams and Massenburg going after each other underneath. Locked up pretty good inside. Two pretty big physical bodies in there. Watch the contact. Boom, lock it down for the post-up position. Oh, man. Oh, boy, I tell you what. Let him go. Massenburg gets his third. Tion McCoy has been on the Maryland bench with four already. Williams, 11 points, eight rebounds tonight. But he's hit only one of three free throws. He heard you, Mike. He said, I'm going to show that Mike Patrick. <laughs> they always do. You say they've hit 12 in a row, they throw up a brick. You see a lot of pro potential in Scott Williams Clark. Got the body for the NBA. Certainly coming out of North Carolina's program, you know he's gonna be well schooled in the things he needs to do as an inside player. So I think he's got an opportunity at the next level. First rounder. It's hard to project. It depends on how he plays the rest of the season. At this point, um, it's still in question. Williams brings it across against the pressure, gets it to Broadnax! He exploded down the baseline, and another assist for Walt Williams. Broadnax a walk-on that Gary Williams really likes. All-out hustle, seven assists for Williams. It has been a long time since a Maryland crowd has seen the Terps manhandle North Carolina, and they're doing it tonight. Williams for three! Williams has 18, and the lead has grown to 18. You know, 18 points doesn't sound like a lot, but the way he's gotten them and when he's gotten them has been so spectacular. Davis hits the three, and he's fouled by Broadnax. Well, you're right about the timing on it. He has made one big basket and big pass and big defensive play after another. Exactly. He stood tall when they needed him most. And the Cardinal sin committed by one of Gary Williams' favorites. Yeah. That's broad now. You don't want to foul a jump shooter, especially when he's behind that arc. But you'd rather have it happen when you've got a... 18-point lead and a tight one. Easy, easier to forgive at that point. That's right. A little easier to swallow. Hubert Davis with five points. Makes it six. And a rare four-point play. Cuts it to 14. Tion McCoy back in with four fouls. Maryland getting into some deep trouble as far as personal. McCoy barely saved it to Martin. And Martin finishes it off. He's in a couple of big shots. Right in the paint area. 
again, Carolina just really doesn't have the personnel to apply the type of pressure they need right now. Fox for three. He's the guy who can shoot you back in it. Carolina tried to get a timeout, didn't before Maryland got it in bounds with 841 in counting. Whistle foul. King Rice with a hole. Potential one of the biggest labels you can put on a player. And coming out of high school, King Rice was said to have unlimited potential. Unfortunately for the young man, he's a nice kid. It just hasn't worked out the way everybody hoped. You know, it's so tough, it's so unfair, but yet inevitable with the publications that come out about high school basketball players, the exposure, the notoriety, the expectations. And so often the buildup is too much for anybody to live up to. And it's not that he's not a good player. He is. He is just not the great player people thought he was going to be. Chill cut for three. Out of bounds, out to Maryland. And it's really hard to project with any type of accuracy how well one's going to adjust to the next level, whether it be from high school to college or from college to professional basketball. Full court pressure, Denny on Tion McCoy. Mustaf. Boy, Maryland is showing everything tonight on offense. And yeah, they're showing us their whole card tonight. Walt Williams is showing us an outstanding game, but he's gotten help. He's got all ACC written all over him. Martin knocks it away from Fox. If Williams can sustain that level of play, he's going to have a brilliant season. The only a sophomore. Gary Williams really an infusion of enthusiasm here. Last couple of years with Bob Wade had not been terribly popular. Chill cut, short on the jumper. Mustaf, big rebound, pushed by Williams. Williams will pick up the foul and really upset about it. His third. Both teams are in the bonus with 7.54 to go. Mike Patrick and Clark Kellogg with you from College Park, Maryland. The Terrapins could go to 2-1 and one in the ACC. North Carolina, which has won nine straight ACC openers, would drop to 0-1 if they can't make up this deficit. Mustafa, who has 15 points, averages 18-5. The leading scorer on this ball club missed that one. I'm really, really impressed with Mustafa in that he hasn't forced it. Early in the game, the offense wasn't coming to him. He was patient, did a good job on the backboard, and has really allowed the game to come to him. Fox with a leaner. Rick Fox, a very good shooter and can hit a streak. 69-56, Maryland by 13, but we still have 7.36 to go. Cadillac announces two ways to begin a prosperous new year. Number one, lease a Cadillac Sedan DeVille for as little as $389 a month. Special smart lease terms are also available on other Cadillacs. Number two, your Cadillac dealer can pass along generous factory-to-dealer incentives when you purchase a new Cadillac by January 31st. But act promptly, because while the new year will last 12 months, these outstanding offers will not. Cadillac. What's your first priority? Miss Crowley. Well, I'm assuming there's product in the pipeline, so... Assuming, Miss Crowley. Unfortunately, assuming doesn't feed the bulldog. The top business schools prepare you for every eventuality you will ever encounter in the business world. Except one, business travel. We've got that one covered. United, come fly the friendly skies. How can Miss Crowley's three-person sales force stay on top of her far-flung enterprise? If you like sports, you can win $100 right now in your home. Just go to the phone and dial this number, Kelly's Phone Quiz. Use your push buttons to answer nine sports trivia questions, and we'll pay you $100. Simple to do and a lot of fun. You can even select your favorite sports category. Call now. Answer nine questions correctly with your push button phone and win $100. one 800 kelly A dollar fifty first minute, 75 cents additional minute. Call now and let your fingers win you $100. 
Here's the storyline from Cole Fieldhouse and College Park. North Carolina has been forced into 22 turnovers. Maryland with a very balanced offense. And Walt Williams has been sensational as the 6'8 point guard. 18 points, 7 assists. Dean Smith picked up a technical earlier. Sometimes the coach will do that to inspire his ball club. It didn't seem to work very well, Clark. No, it hasn't. They've really not been able to sustain anything positive. The 22 turnovers we just saw. And now they're going to have to, I think, do it at the offensive end. I just don't think they have enough quickness to pressure on, although they've gone with a smaller, quicker team now. Massenburg. Knocked out of bounds out to Carolina with 7.21 to go. Of course, you, you might get the feeling that the fans here are sitting on the edge of their seats. Longtime Maryland fans have seen this a lot. With the turf being up on North Carolina with uh, 721 like we have to go, only to see it disappear. Well, you can never play not to lose. You must continue to play to win and do what got you the big lead. Fox for three. He can do it. Rick Fox, 18 points. And that's his fourth from three-point range. The lead is down to 10. Blocked by Williams. That will be his fourth foul as he went into Walt Williams. Boy, a tough foul to pick up there. Walt Williams, he's been sensational, taking a tough off-balance shot. Mm -hmm. And Williams just kind of made a half play at him. Really didn't want to go for the block in at the last minute, decided to go for it and picked up the foul. Kevin Madden will come back in for North Carolina. Scott Williams will sit down. 6.51 to go on the clock. Won't be able to leave him on the bench very long. Of course, right now he needs outside shooting more than anything else. Exactly. And quickness at the defensive end. So look for Dean Smith to do a lot of offensive, defensive substituting. Williams, Williams to the free throw line, one out of one. He has 19 points, five rebounds, seven assists tonight. I told you he was a stat sheet <laughs> yeah. stuffer, didn't I? Boy, he's jammed it full tonight. Those kind of guys are valuable players. 71-59, they've extended the lead back to a dozen. This is Jeff Denny as Maryland tries to trap and can't. Chill cut for three. They have the outside shooting, and Dean Smith is using his timeouts wisely. He stops the clock as he's cut the lead to nine with 6.39 to go in the game. Cadillac announces two ways to begin a prosperous new year. Number one, lease a Cadillac Sedan DeVille for as little as $389 a month. Special smart lease terms are also available on other Cadillacs. Number two, your Cadillac dealer can pass along generous factory-to-dealer incentives when you purchase a new Cadillac by January 31st. But act promptly, because while the new year will last 12 months, these outstanding offers will not. Cadillac, Cadillac, Cadillac style. For a real fan like me, the greatest games are the games I can replay over and over in my memory. Like 1951. Bobby Thompson's ninth inning homer that won the flag for the Giants. And the sporting news was there. The sporting news, America's sports authority. Call 1-800-638-1200 and get 29 issues of the sporting news for four payments of just $4.99. You'll save 69% off the cover price, 40% off the regular subscription rate. Call now, 1-800-638-1200. I'm out. So he's not going to be able to use that device to stop the clock. He's going to have to use pressure defense. All the television timeouts, we understand, have already been taken, so he has one of his own left. But he's got to do it now. There's no sense to save him. If you're down 15 points with a minute to go, it hardly matters. That's right. They've done it the only way they really can, I think, is with three-point shooting. Williams working against Rice. Got a smaller, quicker unit on the floor. A very small team on the floor right now for North Carolina. McCoy is back in there working with four personal fouls. Maryland trying to do some damage on the clock, but they really can't afford to get out of their offense. They're only up by nine. McCoy, nice feed to Musta. Blocked, but it's a goaltend as George Lynch came across, got there late. Here's the offensive-defensive substitutions I was talking about. You bring in Fox and Chill Cut, Rice and Scott Williams. Dean Smith, one of the first guys to come up with the idea of offensive-defensive substitution. Very innovative. 
just a brilliant coach. In 36 years, he won the ACC 20 times. He's been in the top three the last 25 years. Oh, yeah, you get a headache and dizzy thinking about the mind-boggling numbers that he's compiled as head coach. Denny misses a three. Clock becoming a big factor now. 5.53 and count. Hubert Davis reaches out and fouls Williams. We may have a lot of this down the stretch as Hubert Davis commits his first. Trying to stretch the game out a little bit. Carolina will probably be forced to foul a little bit more. Maryland has done a nice job of handling the pressure. North Carolina has extended their defense. Maryland has done a nice job of penetrating with the backdoor cut for the medium range jump shot. I think Williams is going to give everybody a ride home tonight. It's the only thing he hasn't done. <laughs> Just a sensational yes, effort. Yes, he has. He's carried them all night long. <laughs> yeah, he has. In the confines of the building. 21 points. His career high is 24. Silky smooth all night long. And as Clark pointed out, he's hit big shots when they've had to have 75-62. Lean in jumper, pretty play by Kenny Harris, the freshman from Petersburg, Virginia. He'll help him down the road, too. Well, he has a nice young player. Yes. Oh! Look at that. <laughs> Walt Williams just matched his career high. He has 24. Carolina turns it over. Walt Williams is coming alive, coming out tonight. He's done everything. He had hardly an ankle for that shot. He doesn't need one tonight. <laughs> 23 turnovers against North Carolina. McCoy beating the pressure. Now they want to work on the clock, and Williams says, give it to me. Good feed, Broadnax foul before the shot, and that foul will go on George Lynch. It's the third time this year he will have fouled out of a ball game. He is very aggressive defensively. Well, again, as he matures as a player, you like, you have to like his physical skills, and as he gains maturity and experience, this guy is going to be a force in this conference. Fouls out, the freshman does with eight points and five rebounds. Five oh five left in this one. You know, George Lynch he's got that mean streak too. He's not afraid yes, to he does. Bang in, push and shove, and do what it takes to, to get things done inside. <laughs> Massenberg with a rebound and does the smart thing. He comes out with it. But he went to the corner where Carolina likes to trap, and we have another foul. If it's Scott Williams, he's gone. And it is. 13 points, 8 rebounds for Scott Williams. Quite honestly, he didn't get a lot of help inside. He did it on his own. He really did. Maryland, again, very active pressure on the ball. Didn't really give... North Carolina a lot of opportunities to throw it down inside to Scott Williams. He worked extremely hard, but just didn't get as many opportunities as he would have liked to. Madden will come back in the ballgame. 4.58 left, a 13-point lead for Maryland. Massenburg goes to the line. Productive evening for him. He has a dozen. Four Maryland players in double figure. This is the type of win, the type of game. The momentum from this type of win, if Maryland holds on, could go a long way in determining how well they do the rest of the conference schedule. Williams with an interception, finally makes a mistake. Creates a turnover, Fox for three. Line drive shot. Beautiful shot by Rick Fox. He's hit five from out there and has 21 tonight. He's got a remarkable shooting touch. Williams trying to beat the 10 second count, gets it to Massenburg, showtime! Still Maryland up by only 12. 
Not over, not with the outside firepower of Carolina. Harris for three. Collision underneath, and it looks like Madden called for the foul. Clark, you get the idea. If you didn't know what the score was, you'd swear Maryland was ahead by 25. <laughs> yeah, you really would feel that way, but the three-point shot, that's why it's so great for the game. You're never out of it. If it's a 10, 12-point lead, most coaches are thinking that's four three-pointers away from being back into the ball game, really especially has, when you've got a shooter like Fox. It really has changed the face of college basketball, and I, you'll, you'll forgive me for this. I think it's brought guys my size back in the game. Oh, no question about it. Brought the shooter, whatever size he is. If he yeah. can stroke the perimeter shot, and more times than not, the guys that are shooting from there are guards, backcourt players. But Fox showing you a guy 6'7 could stroke it well from there. Career high points and assists for Walt Williams. The expression hasn't changed other than an no. occasional smile. All business. Anderson will come in. Williams gets a well deserved rest. And Walt says something to him like, don't let up, keep it going. He gets a standing ovation and he deserves it. It's been the Williams show. Walt on the court and Gary on the sideline. Fox trying to set up a three. He needs help to get his shots up. Denny. Chill cut for three. Martin battling for the rebound. Anderson double team fouled from behind. Anderson is a guy they will go after when he gets the ball. He's only three out of seven from the free throw line this season. His purpose on the floor is not to score. No. Again, we mentioned it earlier, but he's basically there to give teammates, his backcourt teammates, some rest. It's on Fox, his fourth. Williams looking at Broadnecks, telling him what he wants to do. Anderson has missed his only try tonight. Hit that one. Again, if you uh, joined us late, Anderson is a young man who came back from a two-year battle with leukemia the last time that he was checked out in the hospital, totally free of the disease, came back to play football for Maryland's football program this year. And they just love him here. Tremendous inspiration. Anderson dogging Rice. Anderson goes for the double team. He'll be called for the reach in. And Gary Williams says, no, no. We don't need to stop the clock. There's Mike Anderson. Picks up foul number two. Now, he doesn't look like a running back, but he was a running back in a kick return. Well, he certainly looks like he could take care of himself on the grid. Oh, yeah. Think. I mean, the way everybody's gotten bigger, you look at running backs now, 6'2", 6'3", 230. yeah. Denny will go to the free throw line. And if North Carolina can keep the clock stopped, that's exactly what they want to do, is score with the clock not moving. Eighty-three, sixty-nine. the lead is 14, and now Dean Smith using substitutions instead of timeouts to stop the clock. Drop. Nothing gets by the Masters. McCoy to Broadnax, now Mustaf and Williams. Oh, that would have been something. A no-look pass, Gary Williams seems to be upset about it, but it looked like a very good call off the of Maryland hand. Looks like it went right off Woodstock. Yeah, almost stuck to him. 3.28 to go, the lead 14. And Carolina setting up for the threes. Fox around the screen. Chill cut wide open for three. And they've cut the lead to 11. 
McCoy gives it back to Williams. They'll try to work the clock a little bit now. Williams, very controlled dribble. Nice move by McCoy to get away from the double team. Shot clock is down to 15 seconds. Williams, Massenburg, and that's the way to finish off the delay. Picture perfect. Walt Williams, penetration, excellent bounce pass. Dean Smith bowing to the officials. I don't know what the call was here. I thought one of the... Technical on Massenburg because he knocked the ball out of bounds, and that's why Dean Smith made the bow. He had been complaining about that tactic the entire game, and he says, oh, I finally get it. I'm only down 13 with 2.33 to go. But it stops the clock, yes, and they get does. an opportunity to score. They can but, score, and they get the ball. That's right. Could be a five-point play here. 85-74. Tar Heels just won't go away. No, they won't. Like a relative who stayed too long. Box for three. They've cut it to eight. North Carolina will use its last timeout. And Clark, I told you, this crowd is a little bit subdued because they have seen this drill before in past years. North Carolina seemingly being beaten badly. In every statistical category, they've been dominated. But you look up at the scoreboard, they're still in the building, there's still time left, and they seem to be hitting the big shots now. They're still in the huddle. They're still right there with the chance. And the way Fox has shot the ball, my goodness, he's been outstanding from three-point land this half. Fox has hit six three-pointers. He has 26 points. A reminder, some other games coming up on ESPN. Noon Saturday, Alabama-Birmingham against Xavier, 25th-ranked team in the country. Virginia and Clemson, that's 2 o'clock. Or, excuse me, Virginia and the same North Carolina Tar Heels. Cavaliers uh, seem to be a little stronger than a lot of people thought they might be this year. John Crotty, an excellent outside player, and Brian Smith inside. We talked about the enthusiasm earlier for the Maryland program, and Gary Williams, uh, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity. You see a coach have a chance to go back to his alma mater, and maybe it happens once in an entire career. The timing has to be exactly right. It was for Gary Williams. It worked out, and he's here where he's always dreamed of being a head coach, and he's injected some new life and new intensity into this program, but they still got to play a couple of minutes here to put this one away. Fox, by the way, has hit his last five shots. Williams travels. Oh, and they call a foul before the travel. Maybe the foul caused the travel. Foul was on King Rice. His third. Williams has got to be getting a little bit tired as he goes to the free throw line. Well, Gary's really done a nice job of rotating fresh people in and out. Williams got a little break a couple of minutes ago. A new career high, 27 points. Tremendous effort, 7 out of 7 from the free throw line. Again, this is when they're really critical. The last couple of minutes of the ball game. 87-77. Carolina could cut it to seven. Fox again. Missed that one. Madden with a rebound brings it right back out. Denny for three. They cut it to seven points. 2.03 to go in the game. Now Maryland has to keep its poise. Williams picked up his dribble and made a bad pass. Saved by Mustaf. Great catch by Mustaf. Massenburg fouled by Denny, and Denny did a great job of making sure he didn't get the jam. Didn't get it up on the glass. Excellent hustle by Denny after knocking down the three-pointer at the offensive end. Well, I tell you what, that's a great catch by Mustaf. So often the catch of the basketball so overlooked, whether it's in the low post, exactly. whether it's in moving the ball in the backcourt. That time, Mustaf makes, Mustaf makes an excellent catch to save a turnover. 152 left. 
Mike Patrick and Clark Kellogg with you. Glad you could join us tonight. It's been an exceptional show for the University of Maryland, but they are hanging on right now. In and out on Massenburg. He will get another. Two-shot foul, not a one-and-one. One. Gary Williams getting a little more animated. North Carolina with no timeouts left. See, the lead dwindle as it has caused any coach to get a little more restless. That pulse rate goes up a little. Massenburg hits the second, and Maryland will use the timeout. Gary Williams wants to set his strategy for the final 152. And Clark, if you were Gary Williams right now, what would you be telling your ball for? I'd be telling the guys to jump out on three-point shooters, try to make them beat you going to the basket. That's what they're trying to do now is knock down the three-pointers. Denny Fox has been outstanding from there. So make them put it on the floor and try to beat you with a two-pointer and, and don't commit any fouls. You don't want to stop the clock with fouls. I had some coach who will remain nameless suggest to me a couple of years ago, and I didn't think it was a bad idea. I've never seen anyone do it. You take all five of your defensive players and you put them outside the three-point line and say you're not going to shoot three-pointers. If you want all the layups you can get, you go ahead and take them. And I don't think that's a bad idea. It's an interesting thought, but at the same time, you can't allow them to get quick two points. Again, an eight-point game, I think you still have to play good defense. This is against the uh, trapping defense of North Carolina. Penetration, just a no-look. Looked off the defenders there, found Massenburg underneath it. Walt Williams has had his hand directly involved in a lot of the big plays tonight. Tomorrow night, number 10, Duke against number 9, Georgia Tech. That should be an outstanding ball game. Both teams playing well. Bricky is hurt for Duke. And number 13, Indiana, the team we saw make such a sensational comeback against Michigan on Monday night. We'll go against Northwestern tomorrow night. Bob Knight was very proud of his ball club. And well, he should be with all those young Hubert Davis, they can cut it to five, and they do. Holy cow, 88-83. And Williams fouled by Denny. North Carolina is doing everything it has to do to have a chance in this game. Not once have they looked like they've been frustrated and felt as though they were out of this game. And that's a credit to their coaching staff and to the players themselves that they just hung in 11 of 22 here in the second half from three-point range. And see, they gained a point. I mean, you trade three for two long enough, you're gonna make up a lot of ground. Williams, 28 points, 8 out of 8 from the free throw line, making 9 out of 9. Oh, they're going to see this guy in their sleep. Oh, man. I tell you what, you just can't say enough as we get a look at the Maryland bench. You just can't say enough about number 42, Walt Williams. This would be 30 points. Unbelievable. 90-83. But Carolina to shoot another 3. They could cut this to four, and we have 122 left. But they're really keeping Fox from getting the ball. Hubert Davis, he oh! Do you believe that? With a hand in his face. 90-86. Well, we told you not to go away. Denny with a reach-in foul, and will send McCoy to the line. Oh. Lefty Grizel saw this act so many times during his college career. Of course, not just Lefty. How many other college coaches has Dean Smith done it to? But earlier this year with this new team, Dean Smith, I believe it was the Maui Classic, just had an incredible comeback. Eight points down in the last minute. And King Rice hit an off-balance prayer at the buzzer to win it. Now McCoy with what is going to be a clutch free throw. Well, they've made the big shots tonight, even with this huge comeback. They really have, and they've needed every one of these free throws <laughs> down the stretch to thwart this comeback. Well, what do you think about my five guys outside the line idea now? <laughs> <laughs> they were right on top of him, Mike. Hubert Davis knocked down that three with the hand right in his face. McCoy with a miss off of Chilcutt's head to Denny. Saved by Davis and then stolen by who else? Walt Williams, and that's an intentional foul, and it's called that way. That's an excellent call by the official Rick Hartzell. So often late in the game, that call not made. 
I think the intention of the rule is to keep teams from fouling to stop the clock. Exactly. And you have to be courageous enough as an official to whistle it. And that's clearly a push. No real attempt made for the basketball. Excellent call. Williams hits it. One points, another new career high every time he puts one up. Only a 68% free throw shooter on the year. Well, he looks like a 95% free throw shooter. Great rhythm, great spin, release, everything. Well, now we've done it. He's 11 out of 12. Right. You, you jinxed him. That's this right. Time. I put the hopes on him. But the big thing about the intentional foul is the Terps get the ball back. 92-86. They'll have to go after Williams again. Got to beat the 10-second clock. Broadnax is fouled by Madden. And that should be five on Kevin Madden. Well, what an amazing job Carolina has done of knocking down the three-pointers and really stretching this game, stretching the clock to a point where they've actually had a chance to get back to within five. It's really unusual to see a team like North Carolina that doesn't have the kind of quickness you would expect, and they have all these great outside shooters. That's right. They've got some excellent shooters, and they've shown themselves tonight, here in the second half especially. Broadnax, short arm that one a little bit, but the offensive rebound went to Mustafa, and he is fouled by Madden. That's a big rebound, and that should be five on Madden it is. You know, when you're making a comeback, every possession, every rebound, every single thing is, is, is magnified in terms of its importance. And here on the free throw, Massenberg able to keep it alive initially. And that allowed Mustaf to pick up the offensive rebound and draw the foul. And Kevin Madden slowly over to the Carolina bench. Madden is gone. Lynch and Scott Williams had fouled out before him for North Carolina. 45 seconds to go, still only six points. And Maryland just can't put the Tar Heels away. Mustaf will go to the line. He's a 70% free throw shooter. Mustaf tonight with 17 points. He'll get two shots. He's five out of seven from the line tonight. Big shot. That makes it seven points. That means three possessions minimum for North Carolina. Sports Center with Bob Lee and Dan Patrick coming up right after our game. 30 of 41 for Maryland from the line tonight. Eight point game, 44 seconds left. This is Robel, has to give it up to Davis. Offensive foul, Rick Fox moving screen. And that should be five on Rick Fox. He had an outstanding offensive night. 26 points, he hit six three-point shots. And he really, Rick Fox, was the reason North Carolina was able to come back in this game. Oh, no doubt about that. He was their offense in the second half. And when they needed him to knock down three-pointers, he did just that for them. 38 seconds left, an eight-point lead. And Broadnax will go to the line, as you see Dean Smith. Working with King Rice. Broadnax can put the final nail in this one. It's an eight-point lead. Let's go, let's go, let's go. He has missed both tries at the free throw line tonight. Has only two points. But he's been effective on defense. Great hustle. And really, in the last two, last two minutes or so, he kept the ball out of Rick Fox's hand. He was the guy responsible for defending Fox. And Fox unable to get any three-point shot attempts off in the last minute and a half to two minutes. Broadnax makes them both. The lead is back to 10. Rice, they let him penetrate. Two at this point really doesn't make any difference. Here's the foul, Williams. Denny and uh, Robel came after. 
stops the clock at 29 seconds. If this uh, last couple of minutes seems like an eternity, it's because it is. <laughs> it's a fact. Well, both of these teams deserve a lot of credit. Maryland for the way they played from start to finish. Aggressive, quick, active, executing to both ends of the floor. North Carolina for the valiant comeback effort by way of the three-pointer. 32 points for Walt Williams, 12 out of 13. I gave this guy the game ball about uh, 10 minutes ago and almost thought I had done it prematurely. Well, he gets one in here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no matter what. Whoever else would get one would have to share it with him. That's right. 98-88. Maryland has had a tremendous offense in the last six games since Gary Williams settled on the starting lineup. Mustaf with the block and the three-point attempt. 20 seconds left. Walt Williams ought to be the guy that has it at the end of the game. And he just tosses it up in the air. It's over. The University of Maryland has beaten North Carolina at College Park for the first time since 1983. Walt Williams, 33 points, and Clark Kellogg, just an absolutely sensational ball game for Gary Williams and his team. I tell you what. And they can catapult this Maryland team to a successful season. We'll see. They are 2-1 and one in the ACC, North Carolina 0-1. The final score from College Park, 98-88 Maryland. For Clark Kellogg, this is Mike Patrick for our entire ESPN crew. Thanks for watching. Let's stretch and play.